And in today's dynamic business landscape, LLMs and Gen AI solutions offer a myriad of advantages. However, the path to practical implementation of Gen AI is not without its challenges, from ensuring data quality and responsible use to overcoming technical complexities, telcos encounter various obstacles along the way. On this segment, we'll present the challenges CSPs will face in adopting Gen AI. Joining the session are Eric Davis. He's vice president of AI tech collaboration, that at SK Telecom. And next to him, we have Sandeep Aurora. He's senior vice president, APAC and MIA, that at Rakuten Symphony. And gentlemen, welcome. Thank you thanks for having us. us. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, Eric, I know you were on a session just earlier here at Future Net Asia. I'm sure uh, the audience got a lot out of that. So we're going to try to squeeze that a little bit more out of you on this one. And Rakuten Symphony, uh, thanks for joining the session. I know you're on a number of sessions uh, today and tomorrow, so we appreciate your time. Absolutely. Eric, I'm going to start with you, if you don't mind, and uh, certainly uh, piggyback on that if you'd like. Um, let's talk about data quality and really these best practices for these critical requirements for the success for telco AI. Can you talk about the fact that they're not just best practices, practices, but really critical? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a fantastic question. So data quality is not just critical, it makes or breaks projects. It defines your success. And so we can break this down into a number of different facets. One is prediction accuracy. If you have really poor quality data, poor quality could be biased. It could be unfiltered data. It could be incomplete data. That means you're going to make very poor predictions. So let's say we're looking at customer return. If we make poor predictions of the customer return, we may lose a customer that we should not have lost, which immediately impacts revenue. Aside from that, there's also regulatory issues. The telco industry is heavily, heavily regulated. And so if you look at Europe, they have the GPTR, GPDR. That means basically you need to have a good data government story in place. Otherwise, you cannot share data. You can actually use these, this data in your AI services, meaning you can't roll out an AI service in the first place. Aside from that is also efficiency. So when you actually train or tune these models, the higher quality data you have, the less data you actually need to actually meet the end goal, meaning that you can be much more efficient in the tuning. You can save money in the end goal and the end rule. And the final one is sustainability. Again, these systems are sort of slowly building up, but if you have a very poor foundation, you built this on very poor data, you keep building on top of this poor foundation and your house is going to crumble. So from the get-go, you need this story about data quality. As they say, garbage in, garbage out. That's completely the case here. Uh, Sandeep, uh, the criticality of uh, quality data for these telco AI projects. You know, thanks, uh, thanks, Eric, covering good points. <clears throat> um, data is the bedrock of AI. Let's get it straight. Uh, he talked about garbage in, garbage out, hundred percent. At Rakuten, we are an actually a crusade of called AIization of the industry, and for us, the data is the foundation for everything we do on AI. Couple of points just to add on to what you mentioned is obviously data will lead us to the right model training. And how do we put the data sets, right data sets, get them right up front and get them training. The second win, which I'll just add on to what Eric talked about was also about how do we minimize the biases? Because data will lead to a lot of biases and untruthful outcomes. And that's what we want to stop it. So get the right data foundation models and get it right on the training and less biases. That's all I land on. Mm. Eric, I wanted to transition to maybe a use case, a real-world example of this, uh, what Sandeep mentioned is leveraging this um, big data and quality data. Just for the audience out there that's not as astute as you are, can you give us an example? Yeah, absolutely. So at SK Telecom, the focus is largely on operational efficiency. So we have a fantastic contact center. We've been number one in customer service for 27 straight years. The bar is very high. But again, it derives a lot of our revenue. We're spending a lot of money actually employing these people. So automation within this uh, facet is very, very important for us. And so we're rolling out customer service solutions in the contact center slowly but surely. And so quality data has been at the crux of what we've been doing. So basically, we can run through the checklist, but if we have uh, sort of unfinished data, so that unfinished data could be we have a lot of different data sources. So we have customers that have different touch points. To actually service them properly, we need to know what they've interacted with, what products and services they have. So you need a unique identifier. If that unique identifier is not actually a unique key, then it's very hard to merge their historical records. So that could be a phone number, it could be something else. But if that's not in place, then you're going to have an incomplete record of your actual customers. Aside from that, there's bias. So in South Korea, there's two large cities. There's Busan and Seoul. A lot of our data comes from those two regions. What do we do with people that are actually from the country? These are obviously very important customers as well. But if our data set doesn't reflect their realities, what services they're tapping into, what products they need, then the predictions in the model are going to be biased to younger people from Seoul or Busan. 
So that's a huge issue as well. Aside from that, you can have gender bias as well. So this is a picky day issue in South Korea, but it's a male-dominated society. So if you're male biased when making predictions, then again, you're not servicing a lot of your customers. And so that's a huge, huge issue. Um, aside from that, again, for customer service, if you just focus on a small slice of data, so if I only focus on a month of data, you're missing out on seasonality. So what may happen at Christmas may be different from now it's true, so August, Korean Thanksgiving, may be drastically different. So we take a very holistic approach Make sure that we cover our key demographics. Make sure that our data sets are complete and actually you know, accurate. And the third one is we look at longevity as well because we want to cover as much as possible in the model to make it as unbiased as possible. He mentioned a couple of good points that you both brought up actually previous, but um, incomplete data sets, uh, uh, data bias and such. Again, a real world example of maybe how to leverage uh, quality data. So our is uh, in Raku we have a platform approach. We have built a cloud native platform which gathers the data from all the silos in the telecom network that's super important and how do we get that data on a common data lake plane and get them built on that cloud native platform multiple use cases now meeting our customers what we see some of the ai use cases which are being really getting used right now as panel on customer experience and network automation and optimization I think customer experience, I think you talked about it, is supremely important because that's where you're looking at it. But I think one thing we just want to add on is CDRs. You know, in our own way, world, where you should collect the customer data records and how we are pulling those customer data records into the data lake perk, getting the intelligence built on it and making it very contextual for our customers is supremely important. And that's why customer experience wins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Erha, back to you. Um, some of these best practices, again, for this data quality, uh, really ultimately leading to AI for telcos um, that is usable, by the way. Uh, two points, uh, implementing uh, data gov- governance frameworks, and the other one would be um, data quality metrics and maybe some KPIs. Can you cover maybe one or, one or two or both of those? Yeah, I can cover data governance for sure. So Sandeep hit a very critical point. There's a lot of data silos. So actually having this platform, being able to pull the right data at the right time is super important. So SKT is a telco, we're trying to be a tech co, but I joke half the time, we're also trying to be a marketing company as well. So anytime we come up with a policy, we have a catchy name for it. So our AI or data governance policy is called T-H-E-A-I, which stands for by telco, for humanity, with ethics. And so this comes straight from the top. This is from our CEO and chairman, but largely we want to focus on reliability. We want to focus on connectivity. That's the T in telco. For humanity, we focus on being as inclusive as possible, as unbiased as possible. And so this is baked into our DA, DNA. And the last one is E, ethical, we're as transparent as possible. And again, we're very sort of forthcoming. We tell you exactly where we're coming from, where we're going. And so this framework is built in from top down. Anytime we want to roll out an AA project or anytime we want to touch data, this goes through a review board. We look at what are the risks, what are the opportunities. You have to hit all these check boxes before someone says, yes, you can actually yeah, access this data or yes, you can roll out this project. Then we also have a interactive with the customer. So, of course, AI is not perfect. There's going to be issues. So we have voice to customer. People can call in and say, here's an issue. We have people manning these lines all the time. So we know what the issues are. And we actively work to not just fix the underlying models, but also fix the underlying regulations and guidelines that we have. And so it's a very iterative feedback loop cycle. And we've rolled this out and it's been very successful. A, it helps us, again, not just say, but we practice what we preach. That's been a huge win. And the second one is now people know that they can sort of trust AR data and BRA by it because we have this fantastic program that we've rolled out and we've been successful. And three, we can now prioritize data and use cases because we have this fantastic framework. Mm, well said, Eric. Encapsulated it well. Uh, data quality, metrics, and KPIs. Can you cover that, maybe? I do. I do. Eric covered very well the governance. So let me not just bump on that add-on. Let me just add two things where we see challenges and why it's important. I think standardization is supremely important. And because what we see in telcos is that the the islands of data which are captured in a legacy format, in an old format, which even no one has even seen for 5, 5, 10, 10 years, how do you get a standardized way to manage the data? So for us, standardize is number one part. Second would be the validation part of it. Again, how do we make sure that there is a constant validation of the data which is going in? So what Sometimes what happens is that we set up a process, people start following it, but then again, over time, it starts lags and we are not able to update that. We clean the data once, but then 
it again goes back and we keep polluting the data the way it's coming out. So how do we make sure the validation process and then I think governance obviously is covered. So standardization, validation and governance. These are the three steps if you look at it and that's the approach we take across all the stakeholders. Don't get it wrong. It's not about technology. It's about mindset and culture change of how we telcos need to be approaching our solution and our technology. If we don't change that, this is a long way for us. That's a good segue into a session actually we have on the fireside chat with Uday later today. It's a perfect segue to that. Um, Eric, I uh, want to thank you for your time. I know you're a super busy guy. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we do this again. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Abraham. Yep, thank you nice. very much. And Sandeep, good to meet you. Good to yeah, see you. Thanks for your time as well. It's uh, pleasure speaking with you. Data quality for AI telco projects is not going in, away anytime soon, so I'm sure we'll have both of you on this topic again. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.